group here. Push presses here. And the alternative 72 hours later is pressed behind the neck. How is it on the green program? Here and here. Just heavier up to 100%. And on the blue program. And it's one light and one hit in the summer time. And less reps. So it's here, it's here. Why is there a reason why I pair the exercise like I do? Yes, there is. Why is bench press and squats together? Why don't I do like a lot of Americans that you have upper body and lower body? Because we are not bodybuilders. We are discus throws and it works best for Daniel on day one to do squats. It's too much to do deadlift afterwards, even though it's connected. The squats are more important than the deadlift. We have rest the day after the second day. Because of that, we have a deadlift on the second day. The push press on the shoulder press is only done for explosiveness in the push press and to com combine the bench press. You have to go up, you have to go here. If you only do bench press, you can hurt your shoulders. That's the reason the least effective exercises are on day two. Are the most important are on day one. Okay. <clears throat> He's a very good push presser because his arm length is two meters twenty. He's two or two long, but he has two twenty arms. I try to throw this with myself. I'm one ninety four. He's two twenty. That means that bench press and push press for him is very hard exercise. This is such a long way to go. But he's very, very good. It's almost 190 kilos here for three, four, three and a half. It's ridiculously much weight. And Daniel, why do you like push press more than jerk? Because the jerk is this one, push press, just push, just push like that. When I was younger, like 20, 23, I liked jerk. But then my, my knees felt a lot. So push press, it fits me now. It's really hard. You use the legs, you use the power, like roll the legs, like it's exactly copy of a snatch pull or, or clean. Yeah. So you use all the top bottom of the upper body. Makes sense to me. So he felt more knee problems when he did this. Yeah. This is softer. Yeah. This is very much related to throwing also, even though we are not doing any specific strength here. We are actually doing horsepower. And the horsepower in the neurological exercises are snatch, clean, push press and snatch pull. That's those four that we use. So if we have covered then back squats back squats and front squats, I showed you front squats, and if you take where we have this one, this one, back squats, front squats, bench press, incline dumbbells, we're going to do that now, and then we did the snatch pull from a box, and why am I doing that from a box? You know, there are a lot of questions here. There's a thinking behind everything. I showed you earlier a 
Are you busy enough? Usually you rest much. You know? um, why are we doing it from the box? If you take this here, why do we do sit snaps, I told you before, from a hang? And then we do snaps pull from boxes. Theoretically, in the yellow program, you should do it from the floor. And then maybe in the season, from hang, from a static, and throw it out. Then you take the eccentric way, eccentric part away, because it makes you extremely explosive to do concentric work. It makes you extremely strong to do eccentric work. So why am I in the middle of the winter time doing a pull from here instead of it? Common sense. A lot of deep squats, sumo deadlift, everything very deep here. Then I want them to save energy by doing half in the Olympic lifts from hang and also pulls from the boxes. I'm being smart here going a little bit against theory. But that's coaching. And because of that, he doesn't hurt himself. And because of that, he has energy to throw. Is he going to be weaker because of this? No. Am I going a little bit against what is maybe usually done? Yes. Why? Because it's him. Daniel hates bench pressing a lot and he loves dumbbells. Why is that, Daniel? I'm, I'm exaggerating. No, <laughs> no, but that's a, like I'm a very, like many months I like bench press, many other months I like incline dumbbell, 40 degrees, uh, dumbbell squat. So it's like a periodization of what I like. And, uh, yeah, so usually, like, number one, I don't like at all is benefits. I'm so weak there. So, what are we saying? This is important. If we look at this here. Here's a bench, regular bench, on certain calculated out from his PB. And here is an incline dumbbell press calculated out from his PB. And he doesn't like the bench now, but he likes the incline dumbbell more. Then I switch and have the incline dumbbell for the time being heavier than the bench. So suddenly this one of his favorite exercises now for the time being because he doesn't like it for the time being, a secondary exercise. So he's going heavy on dumbbell, incline dumbbell instead. This is also coaching. And that's the reason I have the alternatives here to be able to use different types of exercise for the same reason. There's a big muscle here. It's very important for this reason. The legs, the squats, the back squats take more in the back here combined with the zoom more up in the, you get tremendously strong in your butt than in your back. Front squats take more here on the front. All of those muscle groups are very big. And that means that I go very much by feel here. What does he like? In it's November now, 2022. What is he going to like in January 2023? Then I make the decision, we're going to keep on doing incline dumbbells. Or maybe even a flat bench dumbbells, because he thinks that's certainly fun. So that's his personality. 
And then I, as a coach, I have to try to get, get the job done for my planning and periodization with the lifting on the chest here, even like this, or with the incline dumbbells. And, and do wheel a little bit on it, with only four forceps there. For incline, you have four hands. You put about eight knees. So that means that we have four basic exercises that in generally are his favorites. Now that, these are definitely those that are in the green and in the blue. It's those exercises. It's four exercises here. Back squats, heavy, back squats, back squats heavy, back squats light, uh, bench press light, bench press heavy, push press, push press, true move, true move. This is his program. It's all based on, on this. It's also. Hello? Hold it. Be careful with that one. <laughs> And then, instead of only doing those because he likes those mostly, I get him hungry on those exercises, so he can do that in the on training camps, and he can do it in relation to uh, uh, meet in, in, in the competition theory. Okay. <laughs> yeah, like Daniel is different from a lot of other people, and, and uh, he can come to me, and I'm not making fun of you, Daniel. I'm just telling you how it is. He can come to me, and after we have done maybe three weeks of five by five, and say like, how long am I going to do it? And I say for eight more weeks. Then I feel he's tired of it already after three. Then I maybe change it a bit. Then after two weeks after that, he comes to me and says, are you going to go back on five for five? So he, his spontaneous funniness is a funny, spontaneous guy. That's just his personality. And because of that, it's a big challenge to me to get the system to work with the personality that is totally different than Bert Cantor was because he was like me. He was a machine. He never asked a question. When I sent him a program, did you get the program? Yes. Any questions? No. <laughs> and then after four weeks, did you do everything if he was not with me at the time? Yes. Hmm. Any questions? No. Eight years. Not a word. Not a word. George Olson, tough, tough guy, tough guy. He wanted to prove me wrong. <laughs> he came once with 21 questions that I have to get approved to let him do in the training. I went to the researchers in Copenhagen last. I have 21 questions from George. Can you answer this from a theoretical point of view? I came back to answer for all the questions, no problem, then he followed the program. Daniel has done uh, 73 and a half, he needs on for four. This is 46. So this is the combination what we do with bench press. And then you have only one, one thing left, well, that's a favorite. <laughs> so I'm going to throw a little bit when he's getting ready because he needs two or three sets. I want to go up to like 250 or something. Yeah. If we go a little bit through this here, what I put together, and we're going to go then into the disco circle later. 
I mean, look at this weekly plan here, like I showed you in there. When you have seen the sets, reps and sets in this, and, and then the rhythm read already, and the rhythm is always the same, also with the read there. That's just a weekly set. Then we use snatch, we use snatch pull, sometimes power snatch, hang snatch, and box pulls. We usually don't use the clean pull because he likes to snatch pull more. We do the cleans by sitting under, sometimes power clean, but mostly hand, hand, hang clean with a sit. We do not jerk. To push press and press behind the neck, sometimes in front. That's what we use. Training methods with all implications, never more than five, never more than five sets, mostly on 75 to 80 percent of max. Makes you go pretty fast. And very often only one rep. Because it's used on day one and day four for warm up, for functional flexibility, and for speed and power. And then, if we take, take uh, the last exercise, that's a sumo. He's estimating a 400 kilo sumo. Is that needed to throw 72 meters in the distance? Probably not. Is it bad to be able to do 350 for five? Probably not. Those people that know Joe Kovacs will know who he is. He threw 23, 22 in a short put in Bangalore time. What's the difference on him comparing when he threw 22, 91 and won the world three years ago? Is his technique better? No, it's worse. Is he bigger? Yeah, he's much bigger. Is he stronger? Yeah, he's the tallest guy in America. <laughs> and We have to try to find out what can we use, what can we use in those bodies. Daniel, I thought he was going to be 135 to 130 kilos. He had some problems when he was younger with his weight, went up and down. I decided he's going to be the biggest distance over in the world. He's going to be the strongest distance over in the world. He's going to beat everybody on that. That was my decision. Jeff Cantor was not. His technique was similar to Daniel's. They are similar competitors. I went totally another way with Jeff, with more jumps, with more running, with more dynamic stuff, uh, uh, specific strength, and then developed this that I've done with Daniel, with pure powerlifting, with spices of Olympic lifting. And mostly using four exercises that he really likes, and then the throws. Okay. And now he's going to do his favorite exercise. What do you have on there? Uh, 200 kilos. As a warm up. One more. Um, yeah, whatever you want to. I, I, I never see Daniel as happy in the weight room as he when he's doing this <laughs> and when he's doing uh, heavy squats and heavy bumps. It's just like it's 
Stop, it's going up. Can I ask you why he's doing that to without food? Yeah. That, uh, that's actually a very important question. Uh, I saw a kid in Spain, we were on a training camp last week. I saw a kid do a sumo deadlift standing like this in regular shoes. And he was actually just doing squats with the bar here. But if you are wider, you have the center of gravity a little bit more back. You're using much more your butt and your back. So that's the reason. We have heels in our shoes to have a better squat technique, a better clean and snatch technique. But we want the central gravity more back in the deadlift. Because of that, we always have throwing shoes or no shoes when you do that. You come better into the technique. This exercise is very good because you go through the hips. He has a very good technique doing it. And he can blow it out that it's good for the head. So you see, my system is simple. Two times a week on each muscle group or each training uh, event group or exercise group. All year round, put it in a system, periodization, it's all the Popping on their kind of all kinds of calculations of trying doing five by five, four by five, three by five, five, four, three, 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 two. That's simple. It's just math. This is psychology also. We are spending ten years together, lifting four times a week, throwing four times a week. Year around, we go on training camp three to four weeks. We train like crazy, we lift like crazy. We have to have fun. Oh, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 250? I think he lost him. <laughs> <laughs> this is so easy. Maybe you should do three things. <laughs> 